Hey, how you doing? It's Charlie, welcome to the lesson. Uh, today we're taking a look at strumming patterns and how to add in 16th note or semi-quaver uh, patterns into your, your strumming patterns that you might be using or you might be learning. Explaining a little bit about what they are, how they work and how you can start to use them a little bit within your playing. Um, as always with all things, if you can understand stuff a little bit better before you launch into it, uh, most of the time it helps and means you're able to do it a lot easier um, and, and then further it, you know, further down the road you can take the idea a bit and run with it. So very briefly, I'll just take you through the, the basic sort of principles of rhythm, I guess. I'm assuming a bit of prior knowledge, but if we just start with crotchets, okay? Again, if you don't know the technical terms, it doesn't really matter, um, but I will use them because it kind of helps separate things out. But crotchets are just simply um, last a beat each. So we're going to strum with an open G and just play two, three, Four. So people often tap their foot on the beat, or you might be playing with a metronome, you'd just be playing really straight crotchets, two, three, four, etc. just like that. Okay. Then you split the beat in two, and we have what we call quavers, or eighth notes, and um, they're referred to as. And that would evolve from a rhythmic point of view, if we were playing just a whole bar of quavers, we'd be playing them with a down and then an up. And I often use one and two and three and as do many people, but it's quite a popular way. Counting in your head, one and two and three and four and, okay? So I'm using the upstroke there. Again, the upstroke's likely to be uh, a more difficult stroke for you because it's a less kind of natural way. Certainly was for me when I started, because um, you're fighting against gravity, I suppose. Um, so do practice the upstroke. It should sound, hopefully, as clear as the downstroke does, uh, just coming from the different direction, obviously. Uh, so it should kind of be nice and even. One, and two, and three, and four, and etc. Okay, and then you can mix the two together. One, two, and three. place to start, you can kind of start experimenting with those on your own, okay? Moving on to the 16th pattern. 16th are four, uh, four notes per beat, if you like, so it's divided equally, so we get one E and the two E and the three E and the four E and that, okay? Now the one E and a thing is, is quite, a pop, again, a popular way of doing it. Sounds a bit silly, but, but it makes a lot of sense. One E and a, those are your four syllables that you use. Um, and it kind of helps. Now your stronger beats will tend to be on one, two, three, and four. So I tend to accentuate one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So before you move on to any of this stuff, you need to make sure that your strumming pattern when using sixteenths or semi quavers is really even and that you're not going Jagged. Make sure it's really even, the upstroke feels easy, you're not doing this with your arm, okay, and you're kind of good to go. Alright, so that's a kind of brief introduction. Again, if you're not sure on all the terminology, don't worry too much. It's important that you just understand you can, do, you can have the beat on its own, you can divide it in two, and now we're dividing it in four. You can divide it in any number, but we're just going to stick with those to start with, alright? So, um, I'm going to take a few examples. So the first of which go like this. Okay, so that's the, the bar pattern. Now I'll put it in context with another chord. Okay, so that's the pattern used over a, a few chords and you can hear it start to come to life a bit more. So that pattern I've actually drawn up here, I'm going to just take you through it really slowly. Um, we've got each beat is divided, now if you don't, if you're not familiar with music notation, don't worry. Um, we've got a quaver followed by two badly drawn semi-quavers. Semi-quavers have got the kind of extra bar at the top, I must excuse my handwriting, it's not fantastic, but there we go, oops. So that's your first beat. Then we've got the same thing again. A quaver followed by two semi-quavers. So, so far that gives us dun, 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 okay? So that's gonna give us down, down, up, okay? And then the same again, down, down, up. 
Okay, and then we've got two quavers, and then we finish off with one crotchet. So that's just gonna go down, up, down. Now, in terms of learning this stuff, to be honest with you, the best way to learn anything musical in most cases, anything rhythmic certainly, is to kind of clap it or hear it or tap it or sing it or hit your guitar with it, whatever it might be. So if you can hear that rhythm, dun, 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 dun. and if you can do that, you're probably halfway there to playing it at least. Um, so this rhythm, what we can clearly see is each beat. Beat one compromises of quaver, two semi-quavers. Beat two is quaver, two semi-quavers. Beat three is two quavers, and beat four is just a crotchet. So beat one is down, down, down. Beat two is the same, down, down, up. Beat three, we're just gonna go down, three and, three and, and then beat four is just four. So we got one and a two and a three and four, okay? One and a two and a three and four, okay? And that's the basic idea behind it. What I think is important to take home uh, from this is that you can see how the beats divide it. It's not just a load of information. Break everything down. That's the whole point. If you can break it down, it's often a lot easier than trying to just play the whole bar straight away. Try and remember these patterns. It's really important because the whole point of that is that your right hand or left hand, if you're playing the other way, is moving the whole time. Hopefully speak and play but hopefully you'll see that my right hand is doing this more or less kind of ghost strokes all the way through again it's kind of there's this sense of movement throughout and that's what we're trying to encourage if you're using the right strokes the hand naturally moves whereas if you're doing the wrong way it's kind of jagged so try and bear that in mind as well and that's a good one to just start with so stop the video have a little go at that and see how you get on with it in the meantime I'll do another one so if I take a, a kind of another variation, hopefully you can see these, I'll make them a bit, a bit clearer this time. But if we take uh, and just switch things around a little bit, so the first beat's gonna be exactly the same, I'll make them a bit bigger. So we've got a quaver followed by two semi-quavers. Then we've got beat two is gonna be uh, two semi-quavers followed by a crotchet. Now, again, if you're new to notation, um, the really key thing I should have done is put the beats up here. So um, the semi-quavers are the double lines and the quavers are just the single lines. Then the third beat we're going to again just play two quavers and then a crotchet as before. So it's nice and simple. Just again ease into everything, take your time. So it's going to go down, down, up, down, up, down. <laughs> okay, so. Again, we're exhausting the idea, take an idea, take a quaver followed by a crotchet, sorry, uh, a, a quaver followed by two semi-quavers, and then semi, two semi-quavers followed by a quaver, and just exhaust the idea, play around with it. So this rhythm itself is gonna go, um, oh, sorry. Okay, so we, our first beat is down, down, up. Our second beat is down, up, down. So together they are down, down, up, down, up, down. And then the last two beats are the same as before, three and four, okay? Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, all right? Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, okay? And again, any tapping, da, 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 I'll put it in context, maybe. Faster. Something like that, okay? So those are some ideas to get you going. As with anything when you're learning, if it's new, you've just got to exhaust the concept over and over again. Don't expand on it beyond that, there's no point until you've really got kind of messing around with those first couple of beats and that you're comfortable with the 16th kind of pattern with your right or left hand, okay? Finally, just while we're here, just thought I'd mention um, what we have, which are really, really kind of popular um, in strumming patterns, if you like, is the dotted 
the dotted uh, quaver followed by the 16th note, which sounds incredibly complicated. Now again, you don't need to necessarily know how they're written because it might not be that you're reading this in terms of music, but just for kind of clarity, it's a beautifully drawn dotted quaver followed by a 16th note like that. So what we have here is this is a quaver, it's dotted. Uh, this is your 16th note. Now, this is a slightly weird concept if you've not come across it before, which you probably haven't. This is equivalent to three semiquavers. We're going to leave it at that. And then that's a quaver, a semiquaver. So three semiquavers, a quaver. So we get this one E and a. Okay? It's one E and a. That's a really th a thing that you hear a lot of the time. Or you might hear the note tied. Etc. It's a really common thing and it kind of sounds cool. Um, which, which helps obviously. So this little rhythm that I've written out here goes dan da dan da da. So we get this. Okay, now I'm just going to focus on that much because there's quite a lot to, to, to sort of take on. So that rhythm itself, dan da dan da da. Again, actually, just to keep it simple, I'm just going to finish with the, 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 the two <laughs> badly drawn quavers and the crotchet. Dan 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 da da dan dan dan. So this is the really difficult thing, okay? Now you're going down, down, up. Oh dear. Down, down, up. Okay? So we've got this slightly weird thing here where we get down, up. Now this is what people really struggle with. You've got to play the ghost strokes in the middle here. One knee and da. So I'm still using the one knee and da kind of terminology. One knee and da. Da da da, one e and da da da. Okay, that's what you try to get your head around. So if you could just practice to start with down, up, down, down, up, and I'll keep that going. Down, up, down, down, up. Slipped a little there. And down, up, down, down, up. And then I'll finish the rest of the bar off. A bit faster. That's that 16th note pattern, sort of uh, dotted, dotted uh, quaver pattern in action, okay? And that just shows you how, how much of a variety you can have. You know, you could do any combination of these all together, mixing them all around, and, you know, you start to come up with your own patterns. Um, I think as, as much as you can, when, when you're learning to strum, or you're strumming or whatever it might be, try and come up with your own thing. And I don't, when I'm teaching students, I don't concern too much with exactly what the strumming pattern of every single song is at any given time. Find something that works, that's really musical and, and easy to grasp, and just kind of keep it going, um, because that's a really great way to learn the chords and everything else, and then you can worry about what's going on. When you're at home, maybe try and mixing up some of these, so, you know, I've, that's why I've written everything in different beats, so beat one, try your dotted pattern, beat two, maybe try your quavers instead, then beat three, three, try this, uh, you know, quaver followed by two semi-quavers and just mix it all up and you start to be able to just form your own patterns and play around and, and make music all by yourself. Um, I hope it's been useful guys, it's been great, fun, lots more videos to come and stuff and uh, yeah, keep practicing and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.